All right, so the per correct operation of our OR circuit will work like this. If you press this green button, the green light and the red light will come on. If you press this green button, the red light and green light will come on. And if you press the blue button, red light and green light, come on. Now, if I go ahead and I push my e-stop in, none of these will work, okay? Make sure your e-stops work, guys. All right, so this tutorial is not um, a how-to type tutorial. What I wanna do is I just wanna get you guys more comfortable working with OR circuits. So to begin with, what I'd like to do is show you what not to do or why the heck we even need OR circuits. All right, so I'm just gonna drop two rungs in here. Now the idea is that we have two buttons that we wanna turn on one output with. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have some outputs here, and I think I got two of these guys. Uh, I don't have two. So we're gonna have two outputs right here, and I'm literally just gonna code them the exact same. So they literally are hooked to the same terminal. They're closing the same contact in our relay output. If I take some of our inputs over here, and I just go ahead and we move them down, we could potentially, we could say that the input number two here would turn on output number one, and input number three would turn on output number one, which, in, in like as far as the latter logic's concerned, that's how it would work. But that's not what will actually happen. What will happen is rung number one will turn on this output, while rung number two will turn it off, okay? Because this input number two here will be true, it will energize our output over here and then as the PLC scans to the next rung, so it's scanning, it's going through one rung at a time all the way down, it will see that this is open, so it's not true at this point, and it will actually see that we need to turn off the output um, zero slash one, so it'll turn it off. So this will happen super fast, you won't even see it, that it'll happen that fast. So this is the reason we have, we don't do that. We never put more than one output in for one terminal, I guess. I'm sorry, let me re-say that. There's only one output address per output, I guess, I'm sorry. Never, never do the same output twice, okay? So we're gonna take this one, I'm just gonna put it back up here later on, I will recode it. And this is where the OR circuits come in. So we can go ahead and we can throw this thing together and we can have, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this rung right now. We now have an OR circuit. So one button can push it or the other button can be pushed and it will turn on our output over here. Now some other cool things that I wanna show you guys is if you right click here and you extend branch down, you will start to see it will extend it down. And it looks different, doesn't it? So, and then we just gotta go ahead and drop and fill it all up, okay? And you could do these pretty much endlessly. I think I did one, uh, one program where I had like 10 ores in here and it just kinda keeps on going, so you can put them all in, all right? Same is true if you wanted to have an output, or I mean, sorry, if you wanted to put on 10 outputs, you could, you know, come over here and let me just do these really quick. Yes, it would cause a problem to have two outputs that are the same like that. <laughs> you could just kind of keep extending it down. This is another really cool option. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna just delete these guys because we're not actually gonna do any of that. Oops. All right, and you just see that I'm going through and just deleting stuff. Mm. So the main purpose of having a an OR circuit, well, it's really to have more than one button do the same thing, right? But where where might we use it quite a bit? And you guys remember when we did the motor controls, we had latching circuits. Well, we're gonna we can actually do that with our setup we have right here. So we're gonna grab a new instruction. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it over here, and I can go over and hover over my output and it's actually gonna take that address, and we're gonna use that address as an input, okay? So yes, output addresses can be used as inputs, but they must be connected to an output that is going to be energized, okay? Because it's, again, it's just a, there's a bit in there that's gonna be a one or zero. And so we can take that bit, and we're gonna, we're gonna flip it on with one thing, and then we can flip it off, or I mean, use it somewhere else in the program. So now if I was to press this I colon zero slash two, it would energize my output, and then it would actually latch 
this uh, instruction right here. The problem with this circuit is that yes, it would not be able to be turned off in any way. You'd actually we'd have to add a stop button in here. But we're going to get more into that ability when we get to motor our kind of our little motor control section. But there's a reason you don't want to be doing this too. That is because there is no physical. Um, I guess like safeties on it. There's nothing that can tell that the PLC that that motor's not running anymore, or that output's not running. So let's say this was a motor control and it did get burned up. Well, the, as far as the PLC is concerned, it's still running just fine. We need some feedback. So technically we'd probably use an auxiliary out or input for this rather than just a copy of itself, okay? So we can go ahead and put that back. All right. So again, remember we, we talked about this, we could do some sort of like, we could do like maintenance type switches in here. Remember we can do um, AND circuits inside of our OR circuits. Um, a lot of cool stuff like that. But otherwise, that's that's kind of like the, the extent of all this. Oh, I guess I wanna show you one other thing. If you also wanted to have multiple um, sections, I'm not gonna use that output again. So you'd have multiple ORs in the same rung. You can do that. This is again totally legal. Um, it's getting it's a very complicated circuit at that point. So I'm not sure where you would be using that, but this is something you could be doing. Um, maybe there's maybe these two over here are limit switches, while this is some sort of starting circuit. I don't know. And honestly, maybe you'd have this thing pulled all the way around it like that. Okay. So, um, like I said, that's kind of all you need to know for OR circuits up to this point. Go ahead and build our circuit. Honestly, everything we've just covered is a lot more in depth than what you actually need to do for that project. So it should be pretty easy. Hopefully you can get it done in about 10, maybe 15 minutes. Go ahead and get started.